This is Phil St. Romain. Thank you for tuning in to my Awaken podcast channel. This podcast reflects on the story of the interactions between Jesus, Martha, and Mary. It's generally been interpreted as a contrast between the active life and the prayerful contemplative life. But as you'll see, there's much more to it than that. If you enjoy this teaching, please help support our ministry with a tax-deductible contribution. See ShalomPlace.com for donation links. That's S-H-A-L-O-M-P-L-A-C-E dot com. And now, our podcast message. Today's message is a reflection on the gospel story of Martha and Mary. There are many lessons we can draw from this, but first let us listen to the story, which is taken from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 10, verses 38 to 42. As Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered, you are worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed, or indeed only one. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. I've heard many reflections on this passage through the years. Typically, it's presented as a contrast between the active life and the contemplative life, with Mary, the contemplative, choosing the better part. This interpretation has also generally annoyed the overwhelmingly higher percentage of people who live the active life, and who are quick to point out that no meal and no party would have come to Jesus and his band of famished young men without Martha's hard work. They have a point. Sometimes the interpretation will compromise, pointing out that there's a Mary and Martha in all of us. True enough, but then back we go to active life versus contemplative life. The point being that most of us need both for a well-rounded spirituality. And that, too, is true. My take, however, is that the story is saying nothing about the active life versus the contemplative life. What was tantamount in the culture of Jesus' day was hospitality, and Mary's choosing to sit and listen to him was the better part of hospitality. Martha, on the other hand, violated almost every norm of hospitality by asking Jesus, a guest, to chastise her sister for laziness and lack of hospitality. It's an awkward, stressful mess of a situation created entirely by Martha. Consider the setup. Martha is busy preparing for serving guests, and she would like help from Mary. Simple enough. But she goes into the room and asks Jesus if he cares if Mary has left her to do all the serving. Jesus. She asks Jesus if he cares about that. Now where was Mary all this time? She was right there. Why ever didn't Martha just say, Mary, can I talk to you for a moment? Then, in a separate room, ask her for some help. Or it would have even been fine to do that with Jesus there. Mary, when you two have a break in the conversation, I could use some help. Jesus might have even offered to help as well. But, no. Martha creates a huge, embarrassing scene placing Jesus in the middle and shaming her sister. Nothing hospitable about that. 
Now, I don't know for sure how Jesus thinks about things, but one can only imagine his discomfort here. Most likely he would have preferred debating with the Pharisees and scribes than be in this situation. He loves these two women and doesn't want to hurt either one of them. But Martha is clearly in the wrong, and that needs to be pointed out. He takes the gentle approach and, in a calm voice, I'm sure, points out that she is, quote, anxious and worried about many things. So he validates her stress. But Jesus, as we know, is not into worry. Never. Certainly not in this context. Burdening guests with your worries is hardly hospitable either, which is another reason why Mary has chosen the better part. She is calm and at peace and present to her guest, who happens to be Jesus, who happens to have something worth saying. So she's just enjoying sitting at his feet and listening and conversing as well, no doubt. One obvious takeaway from this is that Jesus refuses to become recruited into a triangulating communication scheme. If Martha wants help from Mary, she can ask for it herself without him being the switchboard or intermediary. We need to do the same as well, deal directly with people we have issues with, asking for a moderator only when we have tried and failed to communicate. We also learn that God isn't especially interested in our appeals to change other people to suit our purposes. You can pray such a prayer, but it's not likely to be answered. Another takeaway is that Martha, although she really blew it here, continued to be a friend of Jesus. We meet her again in John's Gospel with the story of the death of Lazarus. She is the one who goes out to greet Jesus, and she professes him to be the Christ, the Son of God, who was to come into the world. At some point in her relationship with him, she must have slowed down to listen and to recognize him as more than just your ordinary house guest. Martha is considered a saint in the Catholic Church, which goes to show that we can sometimes mess up and have a bad day and still get to heaven. And that's good news for all of us.